Hello everyone! Today's video is about one specific fat activist who has some interesting opinions and even weirder triggers. So let's go. Here is a map of obesity in the United States. Putting aside my feelings for the word obesity, which has been used to dehumanize people as well as justify medical discrimination, let's take a look at this map. This was put out by the CDC for 2020. Here is some supplementary information. I'm particularly paying attention to the fact that young adults were half as likely to have obesity as middle-aged adults. It's almost as if we gain weight as we get older. But it's in the difference of these next two that I'm going to show you. This one and this one. It's not a new take to say that the BMI is absolute bullshit. I did find it interesting that a lot of those things had self-proclaimed obesity, as well as the only reason we have this lovely photo is because of the so-called obesity epidemic, wherein more and more people are saying, hey, we're finally nourishing ourselves. She said we gain weight as we get older. No, we don't. Not naturally. We tend to prioritize our health less and move more as we get older, but eat the same, which causes us to gain weight. And then implied with a simple look that the fact that non-white people are more obese shows that the BMI is bullshit. But how does just showing a map that minorities tend to be more obese mean that the BMI is wrong? I could show that map to my followers and say, see, this shows that minorities are naturally more lazy and gluttonous than white people. Obviously that's untrue, but it makes just as much sense as simply showing the map and saying the BMI is incorrect. And she showed this screenshot and mentioned the fact that people tend to get bigger as they get older, but didn't mention this section that says people with less education tend to be more obese, which could imply that obesity has class implications, which could lend to minorities being more obese than white people. But she conveniently ignores that entire section of the article and goes on to imply that minorities are just naturally fatter. And in the end, she said, more people are nourishing ourselves. So does she believe that people who aren't obese or fat or whatever aren't nourishing themselves properly? And that before the obesity epidemic, everyone was just malnourished? Who is, who is she saying is malnourished? I, I don't get it. So part of this woman's page is talking about fat people in film and media, but she has some weird takes. I want to talk about Winnie the Pooh. This was inspired because another content creator pointed out that Pooh is a body positive icon. Yes. But I did still want to talk about the scene in The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh where Pooh visits Rabbit. Because as a kid, before developing disordered eating, the scene always rubbed me the wrong way. Pooh visits Rabbit, eats all of their honey, and is then too fat to exit Rabbit's house. Pooh's reaction to this is perfectly fine. However, the solution that they go with is starving poo. And although I think that's the easiest way to show that there's just casual fat phobia and disordered eating learning in children's programs, I'd also like to point out the fact that Gopher came to help him and instead teased him with food, because that never happens. My take on this is that the show creators were probably thinking of ways to teach kids about food consumption. You eat a lot, you get bigger. You eat less, you would get smaller. If it's even that deep, there's a good chance that they were just like, hey, wouldn't it be funny if Pooh got stuck in a house? Let's make him get fat off of honey and make a storyline around that. And I'm not above the idea of critiquing media for its issues, so you could maybe make an argument that teasing someone with food isn't nice, but the rest of the video saying that making Pooh bigger and then smaller as a plotline is fat phobic is looking far deeper into the episode than anyone really needs to especially since he was getting fat off of honey, the thing that he eats all the time anyway. If he was stuffing his face with burgers or fries, you might have more of a case, but it was honey. It seems more like a quick lesson to kids on the advantages of moderation. I was rewatching Steven Universe from the beginning because it's one of my comfort shows, and there's a scene that really bothers me. When Greg meets Rose Quartz for the first time and goes to give her a free shirt, he gives her an XXL, but then also says that she's eight feet tall. I don't know if it was my brain replacing it, but I had always thought that he had said a 5X or a 4X 
or something reasonable for somebody that is eight feet tall and also in a fatter body. Because, um, I'm six foot and in a 2XL. Sex sizing is usually one size smaller than women's sizing, which is a problem in itself, and women's clothing is not regulated. And for those of you who don't watch Steven Universe, this person is supposed to fit in an XXL. If you told me that Opal fit in an XXL, I would believe it. Okay, to summarize, she's implying that it's fat phobic that they put a character into a clothing size that she clearly isn't. But it's a cartoon. I really don't think I should have to say much more beyond that. But also, they didn't even put her in a small size. If they said she was a smaller medium, it might be like, okay, yeah, a bit unrealistic, but whatever. But an extra large seems reasonable enough for a fictional show with characters that are eight feet tall. Oh my god, why does it matter? Are we in a new movement that requires accurate sizing for all characters? Fictional, cartoon, alien? They have to be accurate? And she went so deep into explaining that unisex sizing is smaller than women's sizing and therefore this fictional character should be this size. This whole thing sounds like a debate you'd hear in some really nerdy D&D &D group full of dudes being like, I know they said she was an extra large, but when you actually think about it, how tall she is and the size of her boobs, she'd actually be something like an extra, extra large. Especially when you compare her to, to Opal, that woman with four arms and the skinny body. So Rose Quartz should definitely be at least a size XXL. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, I Dude, know. You're crazy. So right. Mind blown, right? Yeah. My partner decided to rewatch Naruto, which I had never seen. There was a ninja that made me feel really uncomfortable. Choji. He is larger than his other ninja friends that are all children, um, but he's always shown eating and gets really upset if you call him fat or fatso. So in response, I wanted to find good fat anime characters. Now there is some debate if Avatar The Last Airbender counts because Uncle Iroh is amazing. I will say even though his character is bad and eventually tries to kill a god, he's still actually animated like a fat character. Before you recommend Fat Gum, know that I have made a video on him and I don't find that good representation. But I'm really curious if you have a favorite fat anime character. Especially since I've only seen a handful of animes and I would really love to add things to the list. If you read the caption on the video, it says, Don't come at me with cultural differences. But honey, I have to. Because if you're going to make a page critiquing media, you can't do that without addressing cultural differences. The point of this video was to say that there aren't a lot of fat anime characters, and even less that show good representation for fat people. But the reason there aren't a lot of fat anime characters is because Japan has the lowest obesity rate in the world, so there aren't that many fat people there. So it makes sense that there aren't a lot of fat people in anime. And because fat activists like to compare themselves to racial minorities all the time, let's use a different example. If there was an animated show based around Sweden, and there weren't a lot of black people in the show, you can't really get mad about that. Sweden doesn't have a lot of black people, so there wouldn't be many black people in the show. And there aren't a lot of fat people in Japan, so why would their characters, which are presumably a rough representation of their own population, have a lot of fat characters? This woman spends a lot of time talking about fat activism and racism and other social issues she believes in, but she can't go far enough as to address some simple cultural differences when discussing media because it doesn't suit her narrative. So let's get on to the fact that this woman clearly dislikes Rebel Wilson. I mentioned that I wanted to do a video on Rebel Wilson, so this is that video, and it is going to be a long one. I do need to add the disclaimer that celebrities do not owe you their body. This is not a discussion about her body before or after weight loss. And I finally clicked on one of the stories to be like, okay, what are they actually saying about her? And it was a Snapchat story that had just this throwaway line about how in an interview she had talked about being fat, helping her career and really jump-starting her. 
And although that's not uncommon, you use what you got, whatever, something about it just seemed off, so I tried to look into it. So in this interview, she talks about the beginning of her career, where she was starring in her first play that was also casted with another larger girl. And she's like, oh, like she's getting more laughs. You know, I don't think there's much of a difference in talent. I think it's because she's fatter. Maybe if I was a bit fatter. Um, and then suddenly I was fatter and doing comedy. And she goes on to say, like, I saw my size as an advantage, whereas so many women see it as a disadvantage. I took something that was seen as a disadvantage. No one thinks if you're fat, you're going to be an actress and everyone's going to love you and turned it into a positive. Now she's gone on to being interviewed and asked about her weight almost obsessively, which isn't her fault, but the responses that she gives are usually along the lines of, I decided to stop being lazy, no more junk food, and I really just wanted to take care of myself. Now, I do understand that that is how some people can lose weight, especially if you intentionally gained weight. But if you've built your career on the backs of fat people and then become a poster child for this diet culture, oh, it's so easy. Like, you can do it. I did it. You can do it. Um, there are fat celebrities who have lost weight and like, yeah, like I was just really lucky. I have the money. I was able to do these things. I could very easily gain it back, especially like John Goodman, who was like, yeah, you know, I lost the weight and I was really fortunate I was able to, but it's not easy for everyone. Someone had mentioned that she also was promoting diet pills. I saw that there was something back in 2014 where people were illegally using her image and I have seen keto pills marketed with her name, but not her advertising them. And this isn't about canceling. This is about having a degree of responsibility, especially if that's the community that gave you your platform. So the disclaimer on this video was that she's not commenting on Rebel's body. Okay. She then goes on to say that something is off about the interview Rebel did where she said she gained weight to further her career, but she never explained what was off about that interview. Rebel, from what I've seen, was always overweight, and she probably saw eating more to get fatter and further her career as a win-win, so she gained the weight. So what? And then she went on to say that Rebel's response when asked why she lost weight was, I decided to stop being lazy, no more junk food, I wanted to start taking care of myself. If that is true, that doesn't make her a, quote, poster child of diet culture, like she said. The only other thing Rebel has openly said about her weight loss is the quote that it's never too late to improve yourself, or something along those lines. So is that just diet culture speaking through her? Saying you can improve yourself is diet culture. The entire point of this video was to say that it's fine if Rebel loses weight, but she doesn't have to become a tool of diet culture while she does it, but there is nothing mentioned in this video that Rebel said or did that points to her pushing diet culture since her weight loss, except those very unsubstantiated claims about diet pills at the end of the video, which served no purpose but to paint Rebel as badly as possible to try to prove her point. It honestly just seems like this woman dislikes Rebel Wilson, because what was the point of mentioning that she might have been associated with some diet and keto pills, allegedly, possibly, at some point? It's been a while since we talked about Rebel Wilson, so let's go. I need to preface, celebrities don't owe you their body. My issue with this comment is the use of the word hero. We are not talking about idolization or heroes, we're talking about representation. Rebel Wilson built her career off of playing into a fat stereotype. Now, this is nothing new. Celebrities of all shapes, sizes, colors do this. And like I say pretty much every video, I don't care what she does with her body. I care about the impact her voice has when she talks about her body. When we talk about Rebel Wilson in the fat community, we tend to bring up things like how former fats tend to be really fat phobic or how celebrities can influence people's views on us. Rebel Wilson could secretly be the nicest celebrity around, which I highly doubt, and I would still call out her fat phobia. And because she's a celebrity, she has more responsibility in how she speaks about herself. We are not talking about heroes, we're talking about representation. And the way they talk can influence other people's views on us. Both of those statements lend to the idea that they, the fat acceptance community, expects fat people to represent or talk about fat people in a very specific way. And if they don't use the correct words and the correct phrases, they will be labeled fat phobic. Because the way any celebrity talks, be it Rebel Wilson or anyone else, can influence people, whether they're talking about social issues or pizza toppings. 
But her point is to say that she has influence when talking about fat people specifically, and it's Rebel Wilson's job to say the right things with the amount of influence she has. But Rebel never said anything bad about fat people, and it seems like you just want a reason to be mad at her for saying that she thinks her life has improved since weight loss. And she also said because she's a celebrity, she has more responsibility in how she speaks about herself. Why though? I don't think that's true at all. There's a discussion lately when it comes to social media and influencers and celebrities that they should be more transparent about their lives, be it their money, their insecurities, whatever. But if we expect celebrities to be honest, they need to be given the space to do that. And saying that celebrities have to talk about their bodies in a specific way doesn't lend to that idea of body autonomy or giving people the space to be honest about their lives. If a woman came out and said, I was really insecure about my boobs my entire life before I got a boob job, most people would acknowledge that everyone's insecure and it's her life to do what she wants with her body. But when Rebel implies that she likes her body after weight loss more than before, then that's unacceptable? Nobody has any right to tell someone how they're allowed to talk about their bodies. If it's someone you're close to, you can try to help them not talk about their bodies in a potentially negative way, but you have no right to outright police how someone feels about themselves. I find it so wild that there are people out there who hear the term body acceptance and they filter it through one ear and out the other as giving up. There are people who believe that if you don't hate your body and constantly want to change your body, that you are in some way a failure. And for me, someone who struggled with body acceptance, with not just my weight, but my width and my height, it's a battle that I won. It's just wild. It's so ironic that she's trying to push back against the idea that she's giving up on herself for not wanting to lose weight and finally accepting her body, but when someone like Rebel Wilson does change themselves, because maybe Rebel accepted her body but then realized it would be better if she lost weight, then this woman has a problem. This is essentially, if you accept yourself as you are today, that's perfectly fine. But if you accept yourself, but also try to make changes for personal reasons, that's fat phobic and discriminatory behavior do better. If you want to accept yourself, go ahead. But if someone else doesn't want to accept themselves or goes about it in a different way, that's also fine. Stop being so bothered by other people's bodies and stop being so hypocritical. So I'm in a silly goofy mood and I already responded to this person, but I wanted to call out in particular because this was left in a video where I say that fat people when they call out fat phobia among former fats, we have to bend over backwards to let people know that we are not commenting on their bodies. We are commenting on the fat phobia as present here. So thank you for this almost poetic example of why we call out fat phobia in former fats. Like honestly, it has to be a medical condition to have your head so far up your ass. If you didn't read the comment, it says, Haters coming for Rebel Wilson because she prioritized her health and fitness. How dare she? She's not glorifying being big because it's not healthy. I mean, yeah, they're right. This woman and all the other people that are angry at Rebel Wilson are saying that they're not mad about her body. It's because she said her life is better now and believing that life is better after weight loss is fat phobic, which is stupid. So whether it's about her body or her statement that her life has improved, you're still mad over something that is none of your business. And the comment wasn't fat phobic at all. Rebel Wilson started working out, improved her health, and y'all are mad about it. And you have no right to call someone delusional when you and your clan go out of your way to be angry at people for simply losing weight. I've seen a few videos talking about body shaming, so I just wanted to add my two pounds on the matter. And for people in thin bodies who are constantly fighting tooth and nail to say that they experience shame, this message is directly to you. When we talk about fat shaming, we are not just talking about being called a nasty word. We are talking about systemic oppression that denies us medical care, insurance coverage, or I don't know, I've gotten unalive threats on this page just by saying I'm happy with my body. It is unfortunate that someone is trying to make you feel uncomfortable in your body. 
but we are not just saying that we feel uncomfortable. Skinny shaming and fat shaming aren't on the same level. They're not even the same dimension. I hate when fat activists use the term in thin bodies or in fat bodies. This woman herself has said she doesn't like the word obesity because it dehumanizes people, but the term in a fat body or in a thin body isn't dehumanizing. You're basically detaching your body from yourself. And it's also really weird because fat activists make being fat part of their identity. This woman's profile is positively fat, but nobody else would reference part of their identity like that. Nobody would say, I live in a woman's body. Was that weird? Did you like that? Did that make you as uncomfortable as it did me? And let me give my two cents on this subject. She mentioned that medical care and medical insurance are reasons why fat shaming is systemic. But how is fat shaming related to medical treatment? With body shaming, we're talking about people calling you names or calling you ugly or laughing at you because of your size, right? That's not what happens in medical settings. Saying, if you get called a rigid twig for being skinny, that's nothing compared to me not being able to get an MRI at the doctor because I'm too big. Like, those two things are completely unrelated. So how are you going to try to invalidate someone's hurt over being body shamed by saying, that sucks, but it's not as bad as what I have to deal with? It all just seems like a way to take skinny people down a peg by saying, my problems are worse than yours, so get over it. And she also mentioned that people tell her to unalive herself, and that's mean, but you're far from the first person, skinny or fat, to receive those types of messages. It comes with just sharing your opinion on the internet. Body positivity looks different for every person. My body positivity looks like a relationship between myself and myself. It's about listening and honoring my body. One way I honored my body today was ate a delicious breakfast and then went on a walk. Well, at least she acknowledges that body positivity is personal. It can mean whatever to different people depending on their life and their insecurities, and it shouldn't be gatekept by anyone. This is just a friendly reminder that the body positivity movement has nothing to do with you being positive in your body. Oh, never mind. I want to talk about the right way to be fat. I am somebody who is socially optimistic, so it does feel like it has been getting better, but I will admit there is fear in the mid-size and small fat community trying to be the forefront of the body positivity movement that does threaten that progress. The right way to be fat was this narrative that was pushed by the media on what a acceptable fat would be. This included a flat stomach, hourglass frame, one chin, one of the ways the media portrayed this idea was by telling us that certain celebrities were considered fat that in no way were, cons were actually fat. And also, plus size models, who were sometimes sizes 6 and 8 with just a lot of padding. People aren't one size fits all. Okay, my thesis for this TikTok. It makes no sense. She starts out the video by saying she fears midsize and small fats are taking over body positivity and that society prefers to show larger women with an hourglass shape and one chin. Okay, but then she goes on to say that in the 2000s, people like Hilary Duff and Britney Spears were considered fat. But it's been over 10 years since the 2000s, and those women were considered fat in a time when a size 6 was considered fat, and representation for midsize and small fats were completely non-existent. It had less to do with having one chin and being an hourglass shape and more to do with being as small as possible. But the entire point of this video was to talk about the right way to be fat, presumably in the year 2022, but what is considered socially acceptable when it comes to being fat has drastically changed in the past 15 years. Heroin chic isn't in anymore, so what's the point of bringing up Tyra Banks and Raven Simone's bodies in 2007 when we're talking about the beauty standards of right now? And she didn't even connect those 2000s references back to the current era at all, and how it relates to small fats. And in the end, she said, people aren't one size fits all. What the hell does that have to do with anything you just said? This entire video is so poorly executed. It jumps from point to point with no information that actually supports the main topic, and ends with a phrase that sounds okay but makes no sense in context. This whole thing was Virgie Tovar levels of incoherent from beginning to end. Pay no attention to the blanket. 
I think we have a slight miscommunication, but it's easy to clear up. For reference, this is on a video where I'm talking about the right way to be fat, this idealistic version of being fat that was pushed by the media that included a flat stomach, no back fat, which this commenter put on a different comment, one chin, etc. I mentioned that although I feel like we are progressing with taking that idea away, I will recognize super and infinite fat worries that by putting midsize and small fats at the forefront of the body positive movement, we are still pushing that narrative of what it is to be fat and silencing bigger voices. Small fats and mid fats do have privileges that bigger bodies don't get. It doesn't mean that they don't have any disadvantages. And I don't mean threatening progress on an overall scale. <laughs> Okay, so I think what she meant in the last video was that there isn't enough representation for people above a size 20. But like, what does Drew Barrymore have to do with this? Like, I'm still not over how bad the last video was. If you want to say that there should be more representation for Infinifads, what does mentioning Renee Zellweger do for your argument? You should be talking about people like Ashley Graham, Mindy Kaling, A.D. Bryant. Those people are much more relevant to today's beauty standards and what you're discussing with this TikTok. And the point of this video was essentially to say that there should be more visibility for super and infinifats. So people can presumably spread the word about how great it is to be super and infinifat and help continue the fight to normalize being a size 30. I have a feeling, a sneaking suspicion, that more people seeing very large people struggle to run and walk and even breathe while talking won't do what you think it will for the widespread acceptance of morbid obesity. Just look at my 600 pound life. And Tammy. But sure, go ahead and try. And also, it is permanent for me. I'm 6'1", 6 6 and I have never been below 200 pounds in my adult life. It's not for lack of trying, I'm just genetically built bigger. It's very disappointing that she's gotten to the point where she thinks that being 300 pounds is her natural size. Like, yeah, of course she's tall, but 300 pounds isn't healthy or natural for anyone. This is sad, especially because in other videos she's mentioned how she's developing type 2 diabetes, so her health has clearly been getting worse year over year. And believing that she's naturally the size she is can't be helping with the whole situation. Yes, there is a known correlation between obesity and poverty. And it's for a handful of reasons, including the one in your comment, that some people don't have access to healthcare, or even if they do have healthcare, they can't use it, they can't utilize it because it's so expensive. Another reason poverty can lead to obesity is with poverty, you don't know when your next meal is gonna be. And even if you do, sometimes that meal has no nutritional value. Your body has a defense mechanism when this happens and it holds onto your storages of fat. And even though some people find that frustrating, it's literally keeping you alive. Try not to be mad at that. But take Top Ramen, for example. It gives you pretty much no nutritional value, but you can get a package of it for 40 cents. A lot of the times when celebrities do have these like weight loss transformations, they will say that it's diet and exercise, but they're not including the fact that they went to a nutritionalist, that they had a trainer, that they have access to building a home gym. And in some cases, celebrities will use surgeries to obtain these. And although I have nothing against surgeries, I do have something against being deceitful. So what I got from this video is that Poverty leads to obesity because of not enough food or the incorrect types of food. Okay. And she also said that top ramen has no nutritional value. But just eating food with little nutritional value isn't going to make you obese. I could live off of 1,500 calories a day of honey and some multivitamins, and while I wouldn't be thriving by any means, it wouldn't cause me to become obese. And if people became obese due to lack of food... Famine would have been significantly less of a problem throughout human history. The body might temporarily hold on to fat if food is scarce, but that can only last for a brief period and is certainly not why the obesity epidemic exists. And yes, money can make being healthier or losing weight easier, just like it can make most things easier in life. But I really can't pin down what this woman believes about the ability to lose weight. Like she said, health comes down to having access to doctors and nutritionists but she also said she's naturally 300 pounds. 
She said in an earlier video that it's natural for people to gain weight as they get older, and that the so-called obesity epidemic is people finally nourishing themselves. But then she also said in this video that poverty can lead to obesity. So obesity is a class issue because poverty can lead to being fat, and money can help you with losing weight, but obesity is also completely natural and something that we shouldn't worry about. Which one is it? And here we have a fat fat vope in their natural habitat, the comments of a happy fat person. Hey bestie, I just want to let you know that you're being really self-absorbed and fat phobic right now, and let's get into it. You are absolutely right. We did not get or stay fat simply by breathing air. Let's talk about some of the ways somebody can be fat or get fat, like genetics, medicine, being differently bodied, trauma, both emotional and physical, eating disorders that we've developed because we have a society that keeps pushing this narrative, and yes, food and a combination of a sedentary lifestyle. Look, I'm very happy for you that you have a goal that you can achieve, but it is so self-absorbed to think that your experience with your body, with your weight, is universal and should be applied to every single situation. Every single fat folk who has commented, stitched, duetted, whatever, has said that I have given up. I have become health-oriented, not weight-oriented. So I wish you the best of luck on your health journey, and I hope that a part of that is reevaluating these archaic notions as to what is healthy. First of all, I need to know what she means by differently bodied. Can someone please explain this to me? And can I say, I am truly fascinated by this woman. She seems so mild-mannered and even-tempered about most topics, and is willing to at least agree to disagree on some issues. But then every once in a while, she gets very upset, seemingly out of nowhere, and for a while I couldn't figure out why. But then I realized, all the time she gets really upset at a harmless comment are ones where people mention that she can lose weight if she wants to. Like this comment. And this comment. Being told that she has all the tools to lose weight is her trigger. That's why she gets so upset when she sees these comments. Which is probably why she goes out of her way to rationalize all the reasons why someone can't lose weight from money, to trauma, to poverty, to eating disorders, to genetics, to food nutrition. How much food and exercise someone does has to be considered secondary to all those other factors. Even in an earlier video, she said that it was okay for John Goodman to talk about his weight loss because he acknowledged that it wasn't possible for everyone. So that's why this comment saying, we didn't get fat by eating air, really got to her, even though the comment came from a fellow fat person, and it was very kind. And she said she is now health-oriented and not weight-oriented. But there are many facets of physical health, and weight is one of them. So if you want to holistically improve your health, you can't just ignore your weight, especially if you are at the extremes being very underweight or very overweight. So I have a video, I have a few videos, that talk about some of the other factors that can make a person fat, including genetics, um, disabilities, medicine, stuff like that. And I keep getting fat folks responding to that. Now these people wholeheartedly believed that saying things like, I'm not fat phobic, I just think fat people are bad, or being fat is bad, excuse me, or no fat person can be healthy. I had to actively resist explaining some of the reasons why I was born fat and why I have stayed fat. And then I realized, why does it matter how a person got fat? We know, as fat people, that there are plenty of ways to get or be fat, and these fat folks refuse to believe it, no matter how many facts or statistics we give. Why do you care so much why a person got fat? If it's just diet and exercise like you think it is, then just have a clean diet and exercise and leave us fat people alone. This video is a perfect example of completely misrepresenting what the other side of an argument is saying to make yourself sound better. In this video, she referred to the people in her comments as fat phobes for saying, I don't hate fat people, I just think being fat is bad. That is the statement she's trying to refute. But she goes on to say that I don't owe you a reason why I'm fat and there are countless reasons why someone might be fat, which we all know as fat people, etc, etc, etc. But what does that have to do with someone saying that being fat isn't healthy? From what you said, the people in your comments weren't demanding you explain why you're fat. They were addressing the ideas you spread in your videos, like, for example, being fat and being healthy are unrelated. People like this woman make videos to explain their thoughts on fat acceptance, 
but when people engage with their ideas and disagree at all, they're called fat phobic and framed as this horde of people that's making personal attacks on the people they're addressing, even though in her own words, that wasn't what was happening. It reminds me of the video I made about Danielle. In that video to her followers, she tried to frame my viewers as this hostile group of fat phobes that could attack and harass her at a moment's notice, even though she hadn't been harassed at all. And even in an earlier video this woman made, when someone said that Rebel Wilson has every right to say what she wants about her body, this woman called her fat phobic, even though body autonomy is something fat acceptance fights for, right? It seems like any thought or opinion that contradicts this woman's ideas are seen as hostile, which is why she feels justified calling any commenter she doesn't like fat phobic, including apparently anyone who says that being fat isn't healthy. And at the end of the video, she basically said, if you think the whole fatness thing is about diet and exercise, then why don't we just do that and get out of her comments? That is such an infuriating statement. She's trying to frame her page as strictly personal. So when someone says something she doesn't like, she can say, you do you and I'll do me, okay, babe? But you don't get to say things like, there's no correlation between being fat and having negative health outcomes. And then when someone says that's not true, you say, let me live my life and stop being fat phobic. God. Because that's pretty much what she just did. But you've said before that your channel is about learning and having discussions. I created this page specifically to talk about fat representation, fat media, fat lived experiences, and to have a place to educate, learn, and hold conversation. So your page is a space where people can hold conversations then. So if you're going to give your opinions on your page, stand by them. Don't turn yourself into a helpless victim that's being judged for your life choices when someone calls you out on them. It's sad and pathetic behavior. It's almost Marissa Matthews' level of self-victimization. Stand on your own two feet and own your shit. And your facts and statistics are heavily cherry-picked and misrepresented. Case in point, you showed a map in an earlier video and said, this shows the BMI is bullshit. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is statistics. At least fat acceptance statistics. And did you notice the point in the video where she became defensive was when people mentioned that she has the tools to lose weight with diet and exercise? Again, mentioning that she can lose weight seems to be her trigger. And that belief in the fat acceptance community that weight loss is out of your control is probably what led her to the community to begin with. She got comfort in feeling like it's not my fault that I'm 300 pounds. And that's why when anyone questions it, she gets very defensive. Does anybody else use this app as therapy? No. God, no. Don't do that. That's probably how we got in this mess in the first place. 